Hello everyone, I'm that 3 d guy and before starting this video, I would ask you to uh, please uh, subscribe this, to this channel and press the bell uh, icon so that you do not miss any future updates and future uh, videos uh, where we discuss about a lot of interesting stuff. It's not only alias but also different 3D stuff, your uh, doubts and stuff like that, we'll discuss more about it. I would also like to thank my friend uh, Adi who helped me to uh, create the great thumbnails for these videos. He also helped me in uh, making the logo. He has his own Instagram page where he reviews uh, movies and he does it pretty good. So you should check it out as well. It's there in the description box. Uh, you should also, before checking out this video, I, I would suggest you to check the previous video as well where I spoke about the alias basics. Uh, that link is in the description as well. So be sure to check that out as well. Now let's start with the video. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, something which is very basic when it comes to 3D modeling, right? Uh, the very basic uh, where what comes into mind of any 3D modeler would be uh, the foundation of a 3D model that uh, those are the curves. So what are curves exactly? Uh, for any uh, viewer who is not very, uh, uh, who is not more into nerves modeling might not know what curves are because uh, polygonal models don't use curves uh, for creating the basic layout. Uh, so the curves are uh, basically nothing but uh, they are just wireframes, right? They are wireframes to lay off your surfaces. Just think of it like uh, of how a building has its own foundation, right? Uh, it has its own steel rods to create its own uh, construction, right? To support the construction, there are uh, steel rods. Uh, now think of it uh, like if the construction rods are uh, not properly uh, built or uh, they are not up to the standards or they are not, uh, if they start rusting, then the quality of the build is going to be poor, right? So if your curves or the basic elements of uh, any 3D uh, model is uh, not up to the mark, uh, up to the mark, or if it is uh, not very appealing, or if it's not very aesthetic, then the final design is also not going to look aesthetic. The surfaces, the resulting surfaces that you create from those curves are also going to be a bit uh, problematic, right? You'll have to change the points around a bit, play with it a bit. So this is the basic. Uh, uh, this is the default workflow of Alias, which I had previously shown in my video. So I go into file, open recent since I had cre uh, created a lesson for this. I'll go into curves. I delete all objects and I come over here. So as you can see, I've created three folders over here. I discussed about uh, the layers which are very important and in this, in all the videos or maybe in all the upcoming videos and even all the uh, models which I make, I usually, everyone uses layers. So how you create them is by going to layers, clicking on new. If I want to make a new folder to hold the layers, I make a new folder. Uh, how to go inside a folder? It's a small folder icon over here. I just click over here. I go inside the folder. Then there's layer. I cl create a new layer. You can create a folder inside a folder. You can create a layer inside a layer. I want to delete all these uh, layers which I don't use. So I go into layers, delete and unuse layers. So I all these layers, uh, the unused layers have been deleted now. Now let's talk about the different types of curves. So in this lesson, uh, we won't be only talking about the curves. We'll also be talking how they interact with each other, the ways of evaluating them and uh, how you can uh, maybe make your own good looking curves. What are good curves? What are bad curves? We'll be discussing all these points in this, right? So let's take a look at what, uh, what kind of curves are there first, right? So let's take a look at one degree curve. So there are degrees to curves, right? Uh, there's a lot of mathematical formulas involved, which we, as designers, we don't care about. Uh, what we need to take, understand is what a one degree curve actually is and how it looks. After that, you'll be able to manage your curve accordingly. So this is a one degree curve. <clears throat> Here you can see, I just pick the control vertex and move it a bit up. So how you move uh, objects, uh, we already discussed how uh, the movement of the camera, but we did not uh, discuss about the movement of the uh, points or objects, uh, how we have to move. So using the right click option, you can move uh, uh, along the Z axis. If you are in an orthographic view, you can move along the Z axis in uh, uh, using right click. And if you want to move around the X or the Y axis, depending on which view you are, uh, you'll go to the right and left. And if you want to move it freely, you can just use the left click button. So this is how the movement of the points work. You have to select the uh, pick CV first. CV is control vertex. You have to pick the CV first and then pick the move option uh, first uh, uh, later and then uh, move it around, right? So you might have uh, assigned some other option over here in your marking menu. 
that's up to your preference but uh, if you want my preference you can also mail me personally so that i can send you my preference file so this is how it works and if you can see what is a one degree curve we'll get back to that again so one degree curve is nothing but a straight line just think of it as a straight line a straight rod and if you see it cannot be bent right there's no bending in it so it's just one portion of the curve which you can see uh, which is one portion one degree and it can be moved only on its uh, only like this it rotates on one pivot point over here you see a green uh, dot which is a pivot point if you want to move that pivot point you can again open your marking menu using control shift and middle mouse button uh, for my case for maybe yours might be right click or left click depending on where you have put the uh, move pivot option you go into the move pivot and control alt you hold control and alt and slide across where you want your pivot to be so pivot point is like a, a point around which your whole object is going to interact now if i rotate the object i go into the control shift and marking menu again i have set up the rotate over here i try to rotate it oh uh, i'll pick the curve complete curve and i'll rotate it now if you see how it rotates it rotates like a fan now right it rotates like a fan now if i want to rotate along one of these points i'll take the point i'll move pivot I'll control alt, I'll drag it on the right hand side. If you want to snap it on the point directly, then you can just hold control and click on whichever point you want. You see how it's jumping from one point in the, to the another? That is how the uh, pivot moves or any point moves to be honest. It's not only the pivot. If you pick the CV also, if you pick just one curvature, uh, uh, if you just pick one of the uh, curve uh, point over here, you can just slide it across its own uh, curve as well. So this is how amazing this uh, software is to use. You can slide it on its own path. You can snap it on another path somewhere over here. Yeah, I just undo it and you can just con uh, come over here and it becomes a point, which we don't want because we don't want overlapping points in our curve, right? Uh, those are quite conflicting. So this is how the whole movement of the points work. You take the curve and one thing to be kept in mind is every object in alias has its own pivot point you can scale the pivot points together or merge uh, try to converge them together so you have more control in alias as any other software uh, has uh, does i don't think any other software has this amount of control where you have co uh, control points for each and every uh, curve or every uh, surface like that so if there are different points on the surface you can have different uh, uh, pivots for different points so that's how it works like if i select a curve it has its own pivot over here. If I pick a CV, it has a pivot over here, if I, but I can move the pivot for this one over here, right? I can still move it. Like I can select move, I can still move it around. You see the pivot stays over there because we adjusted the pivot of the uh, point over there. So that's how it works. If I move the pivot over here, I move it again. So that's how the whole thing is. So you can move, uh, adjust the pivot of how many objects you want. You can select them together and set a pivot for it. So it's a pretty good uh, handy tool to use. Uh, this is just a one degree curve, which we are using right here, which is a, just a straight line. Uh, it does not bend because it does not have any other point to control it. Now we'll take a look at two degree curve or two degree curve. So what a two degree curve is? A two degree curve is nothing but two partitions. I think of it like two partitions, right? And you see how uh, it's bending now? It's giving us a very smooth blend over here. You see how it's reacting over here? You, uh, it moves around however you want it to. You see how it's uh, going around like this? It's quite an interesting way to uh, maybe make arcs and maybe build a radius or something like that. So this is how a two degree curve reacts. A bit more control, we go into the three degree curve. You see there are three partitions over here. One, two, three partitions over here. It's much more easier to control these. You can go a bit more into the complexity. You can make a shape which is a bit more S kind of a feel to it. With this, obviously, this wouldn't have been possible because it just goes in uh, the different lines, right? But this S curves helps you to take it across any axis you want, right? One curve can go into both the axis. Uh, uh, sorry, the positive and negative axis of a, a Y axis, right? or the z-axis so this is how it works it it makes an s positive and negative side and this uh, makes up only the positive side 
so it depends uh, if we have a 4 degree curve as well over here we can just uh, play around with the points obviously uh, it ne needs to look good as well we can play around with it to make it look a bit more appealing we can adjust the cvs around it and stuff like this so this is how a uh, point works now we will also take a look at how we can increase the points and how we can decrease the points you cannot always expect to just uh, maybe delete the previous one and create a new curve right so how we can increase the points on it so there's a control panel over here uh, you there's a, you can see the degrees over here it's four degrees four partitions over here four degrees i reduce it to one you see over here the, there are plus and minus to increase it uh, by the increment of one and if you uh, select the number of partitions you want you can go into one it forms one don't forget to press uh, accept because that's one of the most uh, beginner mistakes that most people do is not uh, to forget pressing escape and once they leave like if i press four and i pick nothing it goes away because it hasn't been accepted the command hasn't been registered so don't forget to do that uh, press five or uh, maybe five degrees you can then start playing around I would also suggest you to uh, start with the least number of CVs, maybe two or three uh, to build a basic curve and then go into the complexities of a design, right? So that it becomes very easy to control the curve rather than starting with huge number of points and trying to adjust them uh, again and again, it becomes very difficult. So it's better to start off with maybe two uh, two points on the curves and uh, then trying to uh, properly line them up and stuff like that. So it becomes a bit easier to do that. I hide all these. I hide the main folder and I can go into the other folder where we are going to talk about how we can evaluate these curves. Now you can see there's a single curve over here. It's a two degree curve because it has two partitions over here. And you see there's a comb over here. It has a shape of a comb, right? It has a, the, you can see the tooth on it or the teeth on it. So it's like a comb over here. And what does this exactly depict? It depicts nothing but the exaggeration of the curve, right? It, it exaggerates the nature of the curve. So if you see how the curve is going, it, is, it will exaggerate it more. If I take the CV, if I move it a bit up, you see how it's exaggerating the nature of the curve. It's a flatter, it's flat over here and a bit more exaggerated over here. It clearly shows that in the uh, curvature cone. So it just magnifies the uh, nature of the curve right now we'll also talk about what are single span curves and what are multi span curves right so single span curve is nothing but a curve with degrees that's it it does not have any additional elements to it it's just a curve with degrees whichever uh, previous curves which we discussed were one degree bezier curves we call them bezier curves or single span curves so there are multiple names for the same thing it's single span bezier whatever you want to call it you can just uh, call it so it's like a single span curve here if you see on the other hand we have we have how many series we have uh, one cv we have a uh, two cv three cv and a fourth cv right we have a fourth cv and it's a two degree it's a two degree curve right it's a it's a two degree curve but with three spans right it's it's uh, if you switch on the curve you can see there are two degree curves and there are three spans right most of the points over here are not editable if you see the smaller points they are not editable you'll have to pick a uh, pick it as an edit point and then maybe move it around and if you see the nature of the comb uh, it's breaking over here it's breaking over here right because it's not that uh, good of a it's not a very smooth layout if i switch on the control points and if i try to show you the curves look very smooth to the naked eye but if you see there's a break in the curvature comb which shows that there's a small irregularity inside a curve. So what it does is spans help you to go more fluid, right? It breaks the curve into its sub curves so that you can uh, break the tangency or maybe you can start moving. It's like a curve inside a curve so that you can make the curve a bit more flowy. This type of modeling is mostly used. This, these types of curves are mostly used in sketch models. Sometimes people also go a bit more advanced depending on the user. You can use this kind of curve as well to create surfaces. I usually prefer saying on the single span uh, curves because that's uh, what uh, suits me best. But if you think you can adjust according to this, maybe you are sketch modeling. You are a very quick modeler who wants to uh, get things done very quickly and you are confident that your surfaces are going to look good with these uh, spans, uh, span curves, then you can go ahead with it. As long as your final surfaces look good, no, no one cares how your 
basic curve is like maybe multi spanned or single spanned obviously the nature of the curve should be good that is what uh, makes the surface looks good in the end but uh, it does not matter if it's a multi spanned curve or a single spanned curve as long as you are getting the final surfaces as clean as possible right the, it's possible to cre create even clean surfaces with multi spanned curves as well uh, my trainers uh, whom i worked under used to do that and uh, they were experts at it obviously uh, but for me i prefer uh, going single span always because uh, that suits me i can control them much better so let's talk about the different types of uh, curves a bit more advanced uh, phase of the curves where we'll talk about what types of curves are there in modeling while modeling what types of curves we use like maybe it might be a 2 degree curve 3 degree curve but where what kind of curve is being used where so we'll talk about the names of the curves which maybe most of the people in the industry use this kind of a curve as the name suggests is an s curve right it's an s curve uh, there could be minimum 3 uh, degrees that are linked to it or maybe there could be more there could be 4 5 6 depending on how uh, the form factor of this shape is going to be in regards to this so there's one negative one positive that's how it works then this is a relaxed curve this is what i call it it's a relaxed curve because you see the proportion of one is to one so it's in part one is to one so there are two parts over here one and two it's a two degree curve obviously so it's one two but it's in parts it's in parts uh, of it's in uh, a ratio of one is to one so this is uh, used where it's a bit more relaxed it's in a bit more relaxed state now we'll also take a look at where are these being used so we'll discuss that uh, just up next uh, just in the next step then what is this this is an accelerated curve so what an accelerated curve does is it shows the acceleration right it shows the acceleration of an object so these kind of curves are mostly used where there's acceleration required. So most probably in sports cars, you need that kind of an acceleration. You can need that feel, right? Where you feel that, okay, uh, maybe the car is quite aggressive, uh, aggressive looking car. So you need to have that kind of a feel to it. And that is where we use these kind of curves just to transform uh, the nature of the object to the design language as well. So uh, these kind of curves, uh, so as digital designers, we need to keep in mind that it's not only about the design language in itself, but also how we use the curves to achieve that. So this is an accelerated curve, right? This is an accelerated curve, which can be uh, useful to show the aggression of a aggression of an object, right? Of an object of an uh, automotive uh, object, right? So this is an accelerated curve. You can see it's in a proportion of approximately one is to two. Now it's all in, uh, in alias, you cannot measure things properly or uh, like obviously there are dimensional tools and stuff like that, but you're not always, you won't have the time to do that. So it's, if it's a good looking curve, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. It's acceptable if you are having a good looking curve or uh, here and there a couple of uh, millimeters here and there, it's pretty okay. It's not uh, as long as you meet the design requirements and you are not going into class A modeling and stuff like that. It's okay if you are uh, just eyeballing it approximately. So here we just go into one is to two kind of approximately two one is to two. So that's uh, most probably we would see uh, an accelerated curve where the curve feels like it is jumping forward, right? It's leaping forward. Now, where are these curves used? Now you might be thinking, okay, uh, you have taught us all these things. You have told us about all these things now. So what about where are they being used? So if you see over here, most probably in the bonnet of sports cars we or the hood of the sports cars we used an aggressive kind of a look right we used an aggressive kind of a look it should look like it's going aggressive even some parts over here where uh, in the windshield over here or uh, even on the top part of the roof the curvature comb just goes ahead it dips ahead to show the aggression of the car especially if it's a tesla roadster it's a sports car so it's obviously going to have that kind of a look where it's uh, going to show its aggression right it's going to show its speed and aggression so all those things are quite important when you are uh, when you start uh, working on the design now the relaxed state i would just call the back part of it a, a bit relaxed maybe obviously there is a bit of a, uh, there might be a bit of aggression at the back as well but in the center if you take a look maybe over here or maybe even on the wheel arch somewhere there might be a bit of uh, relaxation uh, somewhere if the mood is a bit more relaxed if it's not a sports car sometimes you prefer having this kind of a, a curve nature of the curve then finally we'll talk about 
the S curve. Here we had the S curve over here, which showed the S kind of a movement over here. Here we have the S curve. So you see, uh, when you are connecting like a trijunction over here, it's quite difficult to make two surfaces and blend them in. So sometimes the best option is to make an S curve. So you see how the surface is going. Maybe I'll just pick this object and I'll go into the diagnostic shade. Oh, okay, I'll go into the transparency in the control panel. So how to control the transparency? We'll go into the control panel. This is a canvas. So we just uh, decrease. So yeah, you see it clearly. If you see that this A pillar and this uh, fender and uh, V large kind of a junction, there's a small junction over here where the, winch, uh, where the uh, A pillar and the uh, fender of the car are uh, joining together. So that's where the most important part kicks in is to uh, have a S kind of a shape, right? It's an S, S shape. So its form factor might differ a bit, but if you get this curve correctly, you'll be able to build the surfaces easily. So this is what exactly are, uh, this is what exactly are the different types of curves which we uh, use most probably, most of the time. Now we'll talk about some of the curves which are not good. Most of the curves which we saw over here are very clean, right? It's, it's quite clean over here. If you see the curves, it's quite clean. It's flowy. Even the inflection over here, this is the inflection point where the, uh, there's a switch from negative to positive. So the inflection point is quite neat. It's quite good. Uh, and it looks that it was intended. It wasn't like, okay, something which we did not require. We wanted this. This was something which would help us in the design. So all these things matter. Let's take a look at some of the bad examples as well. So these are the things which we do not need to do which we should not do. I'll switch off the control points. If you see, at one look, you might think, okay, this curve does not look that bad. This curve does not look that bad, right? I'll just toggle the grid off. This curve does not look that bad. Maybe it might be okay. It might be good for the design. As soon as I switch on the curvature comb for this. Now, how do I switch on the curvature comb? I go into the control panel. There's a small option named Curva over here, which means curvature. And we switch on the curvature. We turn on, uh, we uh, go to the, uh, we uh, scroll up. We go into the curvature U. You see how it activated because uh, it's, it's a U. It's U. There are two axes. Uh, there are two point axes, which are U and V on any uh, curve and surface. Since the curve is a uh, one dimensional, uh, maybe it's one dimensional. So you can think of it like a uh, U or if it's a two dimensional, it's like a, or it's a three dimensional, it's like a U and V. So all these things are uh, there when you are working around with points and stuff. So when you switch on the U axis for uh, U uh, curvature comb, it's going to show you something like this. And uh, you can uh, turn on uh, and off the comb scale. You can just adjust the values however you want it to be. You can increase the sample. Samples are nothing but the accuracy at which it shows the nature of the curve, right? If you move it to the least, it's going to show you something very abrupt. If you go the most, it's going to be as accurate as you want it to be. So if you see over here, we were looking at the curve and the curve looked almost, it looked pretty good, right? It looked pretty good. If you see the point is just above the line, but there's an inflection point over here, which we don't want. Uh, it's an unintended inflection point which the design did not require. If you create surfaces using this, there's going to be a dip, dip in the surface which is not required in the surface. We'll take this point, move it a bit up, we'll make it a bit cleaner. This is how it works. It's still following the proportion of it maybe. We'll just move it a bit more. We'll take it, we'll move it a bit more. We'll take it, we'll move it a bit more. Depending on the, there are 5 degrees, maybe we'll reduce it to 3. We'll take the CVs, move it a bit more over here. Move it a bit over here. And this is something which looks pretty good. It's uh, going and it's flowing up top. It's an accelerated curve. It's a three degree curve. We reduced it to three degree. We removed the unnecessary uh, curves. And this is pretty okay. This, this looks pretty good. And the next type of bad example is this one. You see how the uh, proportions are being uh, disrupted. Here the proportions are nothing. Here we have tried to maintain the proportion of maybe 1 is to 2 is to 3. I'll just slide it a bit more over here so that the proportions are a bit much better. So it's 1 is to 2 is to 3 approximately. 
But the same cannot be said about this. There's one is to two is to three is to one is to two, which is which is not which is not good, which is not what we want. We'll again take this. We'll again maybe reduce it to three points. You see how it as soon as I reduced it to three points. If I try to increase the points or reduce the points, I don't think it's going to disrupt the curve because it's it was a good curve, so we can add as many points as you want. So again, we'll try to move this however we want to. We'll try to keep it clean. We'll adjust the curves. We'll make this one a relaxed curve so that you know the difference between a relaxed curve and a aggressive curve. So this is what a relaxed curve is. Approximately, if I eyeball it, it's in a proportion of one is to one is to one. If we see the curvature comb for these two, I switch on the curvature comb. You see how this is in a relaxed state, how this is in an aggressive state. So that is how we create the curves for each and every uh, uh, for every uh, curve uh, uh, for every object and uh, how the curvature comb reacts accordingly. Now let's uh, now your uh, model is obviously not going to have single curve, right? It's not just going to have a single curve. Uh, it's a mix of curves. Uh, all the curves are going to react accordingly with each other. They are going to uh, be in, be joined together, right? So that is the most important thing when it comes to ALS is continuity. Now what is continuity? It's like a joining between the two curves, how they are joined. So there are majorly four different types of continuity in any 3D software, any CAD software. G1 con G0 con positional continuity, G1 tangency, G2 curvature and G3 curvature, right? So these have their points. Why it is known like that? There's a specific reason for that. If you take a look at this, these two curves, right? If you take a look at these two curves, you can clearly see that this curve is joining with this curve at just one single point. Just one single point is just joining together just to satisfy that, okay, it's stuck onto each other. You can see when it, uh, switch on the curvature comb, the curves are pretty good. The curves look very neat. They are joined together at a single point, but they form a V shape. Like it's a open uh, kind of a feel to it, right? Uh, if you exaggerate it, it's going to remain open. It's going, it's going to become a bigger V over here, right? The bottom point is a joint, but the uh, top points are a split apart. Now I drafted the surfaces to show how the uh, curves react and how they are uh, more uh, how they show the surfaces, right? How they reflect onto the surfaces. I take it into the three-dimensional view. I switch on the uh, shader. I delete the locators. Delete the locators. Okay. So delete locators. Curvature comb is a type of a locator. So locators are uh, evaluate whatever you want to evaluate. We switch on the locators for it. So curvature comb was an evaluator. Maybe it shows you the continuity of it. I have a G0 continuity which shows us the G0. So if I switch on, it shows P with the green. Positional continuity has been achieved in this. So that is what it shows. So if I delete the locators again, if I go again to G0, if I delete the locators again in the marking menu, control shift, left click, uh, middle mouse button and delete locators, it goes into delete locators, right? And uh, it gives you a clear view. Now I'll just toggle the model. Uh, toggle Toggling model helps you, it cleans everything so that you can see the surfaces clearly. So you can toggle model by pressing F12 or maybe going into uh, object display and uh, maybe it's somewhere over here. It's in... Uh... Okay, I think uh, you can press the F12 button. It works with F12 button. That's the default. Uh, it's somewhere over here. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll uh, check that out in the next lesson and let you know because uh, it's kind of difficult. I mostly use hotkeys, so it's kind of easy for me to use. I use marking menus, so it's easy for me. I don't use these tabs a lot as I told you in the previous uh, previous lesson that uh, I don't use this, but a uh, toggle menu and you see there's a sharp edge over here. That's G0 positional uh, continuity. Now you might be thinking, okay, uh, these two surfaces are joint, but is there any object in this world which is not curved, which does not have a blend? <clears throat> So you are correct. Uh, there is no uh, such object in the world which is not uh, which does not have a blend. Even the tabletop which you see, which has the which is one of the most blunt uh, objects, is like uh, it has a very small radius to it, which is which might be not visible to the naked eye, but it's quite a small surface. Even between the very sharpest of the sharp corners, there are small blends which you can feel once you uh, slide your fingers across it, right? Even on a knife, you might not know. There might be a small, uh, like a minuscule uh, kind of a radii, which might be there. Uh, so 
how do you achieve that this is uh, the surface in this in the real world does not are not going to be like this and why do we create something like this if there is nothing to be meant uh, there is nothing uh, which is like this so what you do is uh, something like this needs to be created if you are if you are a clay modeling expert or, or if you are uh, if you do something as a 3d modeler or uh, something apart from as an artistic point of view you start off with simple objects right you start with blocks you start with blocks of objects which are sharp then you try to blend them that is what we do in 3d as well uh, we try to create sharp surfaces sharp joints and then we try to blend them so we try to achieve g0 positional continuity first once we are satisfied with that then we try to blend it so that we get a cleaner and a blend uh, surface between the two so that's how it works so this is the g0 continuity which we have achieved over here now we'll switch on to the next one which is the g1 tangency now in this one if we if i switch on the curvature you can see it's it's a v that is being formed here the v dis disappears here the v disappears right so there's no v over here it's just one point over here and one point over here uh, so it's like if you want you can see that in g0 tangency only this point was being influenced this point is a free moving point i'll show it to you if i move this point it's still going to remain the same yeah it's still going to remain the same there's no influence on this but as soon as i move this point you see how this point also moves along with it and there's one interesting factor that needs to be kept in mind that this curve always needs to be minimum 2 degrees only then it can achieve tangency right it can achieve tangency uh, or it can achieve tangency even on 1 degree but is going to be a straight line that is going to follow this line so it's just one single straight line from here to here no matter how you move it if i move it over here you see how it's still a straight line i'll just move this point over here and it's still a straight line it does not move so that's how it works i'll just delete this curve yeah and this is how it works it it moves along with this it is being uh, this is this is what we call a parent curve and this is what we call a child curve or some people like to call it a master curve and the input curve it's up to you so this this single point influences one single point over here which is known as g1 tangency right this is known as g1 tangency now where is g1 tangency used it is used on very small objects like how i mentioned you the knife and how i mentioned you the uh, table top object or something like that or a table corner or something like that g1 tangency can be used you can clearly see that there's a blend over here there's a small blend over here but if i switch on the zebra analysis you can see how despite being a blend you can clearly see that it's disjoining the blend is or uh, disjoining from here right you can see that there are two surfaces which have been joined together to form a blend so for some small uh, things we can go uh, ahead with this but when you start uh, working on a bigger object you want to reduce that uh, blend uh, you want to increase that blend effect more you want to want it to look like a single surface rather than uh, two joint surfaces right so after that we go into g2 curvature right so this one was g0 uh, position where only one point was in being influenced which was the joining point here there are two points which are being influenced this this one is the input and this uh, this one is the master and this one is the input uh, so however you move it it's going to move along with it uh, in a straight line in g2 what happens is one point on the master side takes control of two uh, points on the input side right so you see how i am trying to move this point and these two points are being moved so obviously uh, you can expect that uh, you cannot have less than 2 uh, degrees right you cannot have less than 2 degrees to control this because you won't get a proper continuity because this requires minimum two points with this one two uh, sorry minimum two points over here one and two so that's how it works so you need to keep these things in mind that uh, if you are trying to achieve a g2 curvature you need minimum two additional points to uh, at least main try to maintain that continuity right now let's take a look at g3 and one more thing which i wanted to show you in g2 was i'll switch off g1 and g0 yeah is uh, okay. if i show you the g0 and g1 again uh, you see there's a v forming here there's a point which is it's meeting at one point at least over in g1 here if you see clearly this point 
which was on the top previously in tangency has now uh, joined its top with the top of the input curve. So that's the amazing part of it that as soon as you join it, align it using G2 cur uh, curvature, the top part of the comb joins with the top part of the other comb. So that's the most interesting part of it. And if you take a look at the surface as well, if you evaluate the surface, in this part, it's a bit difficult. You can still see that, okay, maybe there's a blend point over here, but there are there is for sure two surfaces over here. So it is still uh, perceivable that there can be two surfaces over here, but it's still difficult to know where exactly the point of blend is. That is what G2 curvature is. It shows you that, okay, there are two surfaces over here, but I don't know where. I don't know where the point can be. It can be anywhere on the axis, right? It can be anywhere on the plane. That's not the case with G3 as G3 has three points influenced by one single point over here. It's influencing three different points over here. So that's the most, uh, that's the craziest part of it that one single point can control three points. So if you want to control the curve from, uh, from both the sides and you wanted G3 aligned, you'll have to have a seven degree curve. That's, that's the most important thing that you need to keep in mind if you want something which is like okay maybe if you want uh, something like this you can have a three degree curve as well if you want it just one side aligned if you want one single curve to align from two different sides because there's just not going to be one blend right there are going to be three curves over here so if i want i'll just show it to you once i make a curve over here right this curve is the uh, input curve for both these master curves I'll make this maybe a two degree curve so that I can adjust it. I'll make this a seven degree curve because that's what you need to uh, get a continuity, right? I'll object align. I align this curve with this with a G3 continuity. And you see how uh, the whole thing changed. Obviously this curve is not straight. So we are not seeing the, okay. Now we'll see the curvature comb for this. We'll switch on the curvature comb. We come over here and you see how it's, reacting it's flowing it's completely flowing so the differences which you can clearly see over here are how the g0 positional continuity has a v over here in the curvature comb how this uh, the tops don't meet over here the tops and the bottom meet over here but there's no flow in between then there's the top and the bottom and everything is connected and the flow is also pretty good here you see the curve has been connected to two of the uh, curves on either side so it has it needs to be seven degree curve if i reduce it it's going to do some random uh, things because obviously it's not connected it does not have that many cvs right it does not have that many cvs so it's just connecting with these three now i'll have to make it seven again and you see how it goes back again to that original position that's how it works and again taking a look at the surface we'll take a look at the surface uh, as i mentioned in g0 there was a very sharp point g1 uh, a blend but uh, you could see where the blend was happening from in G2 you knew there were two surfaces but it was difficult to perceive where the blend is going to be in G3 it is almost impossible to know where the blend is or uh, it's almost as good as having no blend if you see there's no clue where there could be a break there's no clue over here it could even be a single surface right it could even be a single surface if I turn on something like this maybe showroom it's almost impossible to know where the curve is uh, surface is going to be. All right? Something like that. So this is what makes it interesting is that the different types of cur uh, curvature continuity, obviously the surface is, does not look that uh, pretty because we have aligned it uh, at the bottom. We'll have to play with the curvature comb a bit as well, but that's how it works. We still don't know if it's a single uh, surface or if it's multiple surfaces. That's the beauty of G3 curvature. It is mostly used for car tops and maybe bonnets or something like that. So it depends how much you want to make it seem blend into the other object. So these were the different types of continuity. This is how you can try to achieve all these things as well. And uh, yeah. Anything else that we need to see? Maybe this video has been quite long. So I think we'll wrap it over here because I think that's it for the uh, video. And uh, I think, yeah. So these things you need to keep in mind. Most probably uh, you'll get 
quite good at understanding what type of curve is what, what to use, what not to use and uh, how to use uh, these curves, uh, which curves goes where. I have already showed you uh, in this uh, lesson how the curves work and how the uh, curves intersect with each other, how they align with each other to form different types of continuity because the, uh, obviously there is not one single curve that is going to wrap around the model. There are multiple curves and there is a network of curves to be honest too just join together, uh, intersect with each other and stuff like that. So that's how it works. So this was all about curves, the basic of what you need to start understanding. The next uh, will be, I think we'll start modeling something maybe. We won't be uh, going into more into theory now. We might start more into the practicals of uh, making a model. We'll also talk about, uh, in the next lesson, we'll also talk about uh, the different tools now. We'll start talking about the different tools which we need to construct all these curves and surfaces and stuff like that. So we'll go step by step. And then we'll uh, see how uh, well the session progresses. You can also put your doubts which you have uh, in the comments box, uh, comment box below. You can even mail me at uh, that uh, 3dguy23 at gmail.com and let me know your thoughts about the videos and uh, how the lessons are for you. Uh, that's it for the video. Thank you. I hope you like it.